Welcome to EPG Patshala. My name is Parimala Kulkarni. I teach in the Department of English, Usmania University, Hyderabad. This module is from Unit 4, the poetry unit of the paper, African and Caribbean Writing in English. This is a module on Taban Lo Leong. And in this presentation, we shall learn about Taban Lo Leong, a South Sudanese Ugandan poet. We will also take a look at his works his style of writing and some of his thematic concerns. We'll later look at two poems from each of his collections, Franz Fanon's Uneven Ribs and Another Digger, Nigger Dead. And finally, we will also take a look at the critical reception of his work. Now we will take a look at Taban Lo Leong, his works and discuss some of his poems. To begin with, Lo Leong was a poet, a critic, a novelist, a short story writer, an essayist and a playwright. So he was a prolific and a versatile writer. He was known for eccentric and his non-conformist views and style, which has made him uh, call the, the critics have called him East Africa's uh, black sheep. He has been called the enfant terrible of East Africa. However, both his critics as well as, it, as, his, uh, as well as his admirers cannot disagree about one thing. They all agree that his is an extremely original thinking. He is known for his originality of thought and writing too. Now we go on to look at a few biographical details of Taban Lo Leong. Leong was born in the year 1938 he was born in South Sudan to Ugandan parents. He grew up speaking two languages, his mother tongue Kuku as well as Akoli. He was initially educated in Uganda and then later he went on to the United States of America. He was a student of Okot Bitek. Later when he pursued his education in the United States of America, he went on to join the International Writers Workshop at University of Iowa, where he became the first African in the year 1968 to graduate as a Master of Fine Arts in Creative Writing. After his education, he wished to return to Uganda. However, the Ugandan totalitarian rule prevented him from doing so. So he went to Kenya and joined the University of Nairobi in Kenya. And in this university, he was the first teacher to offer a course in African oral literatures, which had never been done before. He also took the initiative to replace the English curriculum with a curriculum centered on the African literatures. This was something which had not been thought of earlier. Here he worked with three other famous Africans, Gugi Vathiango, Okot Bitek, as well as Henry Owur Anyumba. And with Gugi and Anyumba, Leong argued for the abolition of the English department in the University of Nairobi. This memo which the three of them wrote arguing for the abolition of the English department has become a watershed document in the history of post-colonial theory and criticism. Next, we will take a look at Leong's works. Leong has a substantial body of work, essays, poems, novels and plays and all his works are known for their thematic and stylistic eclecticism. In his works, we find an irreverence to both the Western as well as the African literary canon. His work can be approached in two phases. The first phase is the late 1960s and early 1970s, where he simultaneously defended as well as attacked African traditions. He defended the African interests and character while criticizing ideologies of Africanness. To this period belong works like Fictions and Eating Chiefs, where Leong defends African cultures, traditions, and oral literatures. In his works like The Last Word, The Uniformed Man, and Meditations in Limbo, Leong satirizes the claims of an African literary canon and cultural nationalism. And 
In his work, The Last Word, he dismisses East Africa as a literary desert, claiming there's no literary tradition in East Africa, which shocked his fellow Africans. And even his poetry collections show a similar pattern. For instance, the poems in his collection, Franz Fanon's Uneven Ribs, published in 1971, and his other poetry collection, Another Nigger Dead, published in 1972, are an intentional misreading of the Western canon uh, in order to make space for the African voice. His other work, Ballads of Underdevelopment, published in 1976, undermines the poetic basis of the African tradition. So we find in the first phase of his works, uh, he simultaneously supports as well as criticizes many of the African traditions and African ideas. In the second phase of his works, that is in the 1990s, we find a satirical strain which is present, yet there is a strong lyrical note which is heard in his works. For instance, in his books, Words That Melt a Mountain, published in 1996, Carrying Knowledge Up a Palm Tree in 1997, these works depict the post-colonial crisis. So we can say that his poetry has been described as a foristic, modernist, existentialist, absurdist and avant-garde. His poetry also has been inspired by the African oral literatures and oral traditions. What we find in his work is, Leong's poetry is highly individualistic and experimental in nature, which shows him as a highly adaptable poet who has borrowed and adapted from other poets from different parts of the world. In the same phase, Leong has written some plays. His play, Show What and So What, published in 2007, and another of his play, The Color of Hope, published in 2010, also were not meant perhaps to be performed on the stage. They are more like closet drama. The first play, Show What and So What, satirizes pomposity and consumerism in the world. And the second play, The Color of Hope, explores politics, generational conflicts and women's rights in Africa. So we see in these two phases, there is a clear division of Leong's interests. In the first phase of Leong's poetry, we find that Leong simultaneously criticizes and defends the African character and African traditions. Whereas in the second phase, written in the 1990s, we find a strong strain of satire in his works, yet there is a lyrical note heard in his works. We now turn to the themes and styles of Leong's work. Leong's style is influenced by traditional stories. He recalls listening to fireside stories narrated by his grandparents. So his works deal with a wide range of cultural and political and social issues. They're all marked by an iconoclastic disposition which challenge established institutions like religion and other governmental institutions. Stylistically, he combines both the modernist as well as the indigenous styles. He has been influenced by the Western modernist poets as well as the local African traditions. His style is considered highly individualistic he defies all the customary norms of poetry writing. Therefore, he has earned both acclaim as well as criticism. Though his work is difficult to categorize, but it is praised for its cultural synthesis. He strongly believed in synthesizing various cultures. He never believed in the culture of isolationism. What is important here for us to remember is that Leong does not believe in rejecting something just because it comes from the West or accepting something because it belongs to the African tradition. So, Leong does not believe in blind worship of Africa and Africans. For Leong, self-search and criticism 
are very important to attain progress or development because he believes that self-criticism and search are tools to take us forward and for human progress in general. We find in his works that Leong attacked religion and neg negritude, the two sacred cows of the African tradition. We find that Leong is strongly critical of Christianity, but unlike his fellow Africans, he does not criticize only Christianity as something which has come from the West. What we find in Leong is a general skepticism about all religions. Leong attacks the idea of negritude, which takes pride in the sense of Africa and Africanness. For Leong, negritude has served its purpose. It's no longer required to the contemporary times and contemporary world. Therefore, he urges the writers, the African intellectuals, to go beyond negritude, to look at the world around them and try to synthesize and not take undue pride in the local African traditions and culture. He urges them not to be parochial. We will now take a look at some poems from his two poetry collections. The first collection that I earlier mentioned is Franz Fanon's Uneven Ribs. From this collection, we will take a look at one poem called The Best Poet. But before that, let me talk a little bit about the collection in general. This collection is marked by a rebellious and swiftian angry tone at the lack of progress after independence in Africa. Here you find a sense of rebellion, a spirit of revolutionary spirit which pervades the entire work. We find figures, revolutionary figures like Marx, Fanon and Prometheus appearing very frequently in the various poems. What Leong does in this collection is he subverts the Western history and its canon in order to create space for African voice and perspective. So let's go to one of his poems, The Best Poets. As the title suggests, The Best Poets is Leong's search for an appropriate form for his poetic art. He says in The Best Poet, Ask not reader if this be poetry or not, because it isn't. So Leong dismisses poetry as thoughts arranged in inhuman ways. Leong discovers that his ancestors, whom he calls his grand folks, never spoke in poetry. They spoke in stories. So he says, My grand folks were not eloquent in either prose or poetry. But he says, spoke they story, tell they in words, words all full of emotion and feeling and wisdom and rhythm, rhythm, them, 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 boom, boom, boom. So you see the visual and oral effect of this poem which echoes the drum beats. This visual and oral effect echoing the drum beats shows the poet's search for a poetic idiom reflecting the oral traditions of his grand folks. So though Leong is closer to African traditions, it does not mean he's not open to non-African traditions. In fact, he was influenced by many modernist poets, particularly the Imagists. Imagist poets like Carlos William Carlos, E. E. Cummings, as well as Ezra Pound. For he says, their poetry has ears for sounds, eyes for the shape of poetry and its architecture. So thus, the search for an appropriate form recurs throughout the work of Leong. So after looking at one of his poems, The Best Poets, we go on to look at, briefly, another of his poems. The second poem is called Student's Lament. This is also from the same collection, that is, Franz Fanon's Uneven Ribs. 
Now let us take a look at what this poem is all about. In this poem, we find there is a lot of expectation and optimism that belong to Leong's early works. But the poem is also pervaded by a sense of pessimism, lack of hope. So you find simultaneously a sense of optimism at the same time also a sense of despair and hopelessness in this collection. So let me go to the student's lament. This poem begins on a joyous note where there is a nostalgic recalling of the pre-independence days where the fathers used to urge their sons to go to school. For what? For they said, learn all you can for the benefit of the tribe. So the focus is on education for social benefit. But however, what they find now that it is a tragedy. It is a tragedy that progress has stopped after independence. Before independence, you fought for independence. But after independence, what is there? There is this is what Leon considers a tragedy. In the same poem, he parodies, he mocks the humane claims of negritude. For Leon says here, Strange mules called negritude and African personality overran the terrain and kicked wisdom down or above our heads. Therefore, he says, the claims of negritude are no longer useful now. Now he says, Africa must be alert and forearmed. He says that Africa was known for its humanistic values and qualities, qualities of kindness and mercy. For he says, our humanism is good. Our hospitality is good. Our unsophistication is good. Our sweat is good. Because with these worldly empires have stood. So he points out that our humanism, our hospitality, our kindness, our mercy have given rise to the building of empires. It let others invade our country. It let other countries exploit our resources. And therefore, he says, we need to rethink, we need to revision the concept of progress and independence. Then he goes on to give a message to the students. Leong's message to the student is that don't be isolated from the rest of the world. As I had mentioned earlier in the presentation, he did not believe in parochialism. He believed in a sense of connection with the world at large. So here he says, don't be isolated. And he says, once we were barred, now we ourselves bar. So Leong's concern is that once upon a time, we were isolated from the world. We were forced to be isolated. But now it's time not to be isolated. We should unbar ourselves. We should free ourselves. However, on the one hand, he asks students not to be isolated from the outside world. But in the next part of his poem, he goes on to say that students should be isolated from politicians. He believes that politics is very harmful for students. So he says, estrange the students from the politicians or else they are condemned to mediocrity. So he strongly believes that in order to achieve progress and excellence in their fields, students need to be isolated from politics. In the next part of the poem, he urges the writers, the leaders and all those who are concerned about the progress of Africa to work towards the good of Africa. He exhorts the writers not to be eunuch scholars. He asks the leaders to provide good leadership to the people, keeping in mind the collective goodness or the goodness of the collective masses. Leong also urges the writers not to forget tradition. Because he says, in order to reach high, you need to be rooted to the ground. So he says, he who soars highest, who's deeply rooted. So while arguing for being rooted in tradition 
at the same time he does not advocate blind worship of tradition just because it was our tradition if it is not relevant today we don't have to stick to it that is the message he tries to give through this poem also so he says question blind conservatism don't be blind just because it's your tradition don't take pride in every tradition just because that belongs to you you need to have a critical questioning attitude towards all traditions even though they are 100 years old or 1000 years old then we find leong's student figure towards the end of the poem is very very distressed what is the cause of the distress the distress is that the student wonders looking at the contemporary uh, african situation the student says was this why we worked so hard to gain independence was this why we broke our backs so the student says is this the reward a sign for us we who sprained our shoulders who broke our backs so there is that sense of distress among the student in this poem called the student's lament the poem concludes on a note of mocking despair however despite the sense of despair that pervades the poem the poem does have a sense of optimism a sense of hope because leong says that good leaders can bring in collective good we will now take a look at two short poems from the next collection that is another nigger dead now let me first tell you a few things about this collection another nigger dead is a collection with several curious features for the reader the complete text is printed in small letters with absolutely no punctuation so what does this suggest this rejection of graphological rules leong seems to be suggesting that poems should be seen primarily as spoken keeping close to the african oral tradition what is also interesting about this collection of poems is we see a significant change in tone and style of the way the poems are written we also find a note of personal growth and also a lyrical note in these poems in this collection we find that there is a greater awareness and deeper insights into the various aspects of human suffering now let us take a look at one short poem from this collection which is called bless the african coup bless the african coup presents the tragic message of africa's failed present it gives voice to the sense of despair a sense of hopelessness at what has happened to the post independent african countries there are memories of wars massacres bloodshed and coups so an ironic vision explores the conventional notions of progress tragedy and comedy in this poem it is unfortunate but true that coups which are bloody in nature have led to our understanding of the term tragedy it is only after all these coups that tragedy has come to mean something for us these coups have defined tragedy for us these coups have shown us the different tragic faces of the coups leong says bless the african coup tragedy now means a thing to us and he goes on to define the tragedy by saying when your child dies tragedy it is tragedy is that which crushes your best hopes so he goes on to define tragedy and then he goes on to point out how tragic has many faces so some of them he says it is a tragedy when you question goodness in the world it is a tragedy when you are turned into a beast for other men to hunt 
It is tragedy when your friends are about to hang you. It is tragedy when your brother betrays you for fun or fund. So this poem presents a very bleak picture of contemporary Africa. However, though the poem points out that there are many problems, but some solutions are also offered. So in the poem, Leong says, in spite of some problems, there is still hope. Let us look at a few of these lines where Leong says, Weep not, child. Human mind has a way out. Weep not, mother. Other ways shall still be found. So he says, let us not be disappointed. Let us not lose hope. We will find some other ways out of these contemporary problems. Further, he continues on a note of optimism. Indomitable farmers, cultivate another garden, for man must eat. If you can't drink milk, can't orange fruits do? So he says, if we do not have milk, we will do with orange fruits. So he encourages the farmers to grow. So the point that I'm trying to make here is, though this poem is informed by a sense of sadness, a sense of despair, there is also hope and optimism in the poem. And finally, the poet points out that tragedy can only coexist with hope. For he says, for the human mind yearns for greatness, even if man perishes on the way. That is a kind of sense of hope that Leong gives to the readers in this poem. So Leong points out that though there is no distinction between white colonial oppression and black totalitarian rule, there is hope for revival of African culture and humanity. So the poem, Bless the African Coup, is a poem containing both despair as well as hope. While there is despair, remembering the bloody coups, there is also hope for a better future. The last poem that we are going to discuss in this pre uh, presentation is called the filed man laughed and said. Now this poem presents an imaginary press meet where a minister perhaps is addressing the press. And the poem is presented in a form of, in a series of questions and answers. Here, the filed man perhaps refers to the politicians. And then you have the functionary who is the party bureaucrat. So in this poem, we find the minister giving many orders and the functionary very routinely pronouncing done. So let us take a look at this poem. The poem begins. The file man laughed and said, nationalization is the answer. A reporter jested, what is the question? The file man laughed and said, neo-colonialism is the problem. Whence comes neo-colonialism? From the West, of course. Westerners from the East are friends indeed. From the East, friendship only flows. So what we find here is that high sounding words like colonialism, neo-colonialism, West, etc. are used, but without really much meaning. And the politician simply says, this has to be done. And the party bureaucrat nods his head and says it is done without even thinking of what is being really given as an order. So this poem satirizes, targets the simple dichotomies of West and East or friend and enemy because Leong seems to say there are no simple dichotomies in life. There are no simple solutions to complex problems. There can only be questions but no singular answers. So this poem very powerfully presented in a series of questions and answers challenge the contemporary African politicians and their intentions. The hypocrisy of the politicians comes out when they say that finally he says 
nationalize poverty. So, Leong in this poem attempts a strong critique of the African governments after gaining independence. So, there seems to be a feeling that there has been no change. The collective masses have suffered, are suffering, looks like they're going to suffer. But however, as I pointed out earlier, there is a sense of hope because he points out that good leaders can work towards a collective good. So far, we looked at two poems each from his poetry collections, Franz Fanon's Uneven Ribs and Another Nigger Dead. Now let us very briefly take a look at the kind of critical acclaim that Leong received. Leong has been both praised and criticized. He has strong supporters as well as strong detractors. He has been criticized for his unconventional style. He has been criticized for challenging established institutions. He has also been criticized perhaps because he has not been understood. On the one hand, Leong has been considered Africa's literary icon whereas others have called him the black sheaf, the enfant terrible, East African gadfly. These are the labels that he has got. Some critics have criticized him saying that his poetry is extremely cerebral. There is absence or lack of feeling in it, that the poetry is not emotive. So he has got both acclaim as well as criticism for his work. He has also been accused of being a bourgeois, a racist critic, accused of propaganda and also critics have pointed out that his works are pervaded with a sense of Indo-Western decadence. However, one of his critics, Leong's critics, Roscoe, points out that Leong's mind is an Olympian mind which cannot be tied down to a formula. However, I think Leong's own words best capture what we can say about Leong. This is what Leong has to say. He says, I have strived to say the things that are new, but the things that are new take long to understand. So it may take long for the world to understand Leong. With that, we come to the summary of this module. To summarize what we looked at in this presentation, we said that Leong is a South Sudanese Ugandan poet. He was an essayist, a novelist, a critic, a playwright. His works are informed by a highly satirical style. We looked at the major themes in his works. His works deal mainly with the socio-cultural and political issues in Africa. Then we went on to look at two poems from his poetry collections, Franz Fano's Uneven Rips as well as Another Nigger Dead. These works are marked by an in initial optimism and revolutionary zeal but slowly giving way to despair and hopelessness. We also looked at the critical acclaim that Leong received. As I said earlier, Leong has been considered the literary icon of Africa, while simultaneously he has been called the Eastern, East African gadfly or the black sheep. Hope this module has helped you gain some insights into understanding Leong's poetry better. Thank you.